Hi, and welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name's Mark McNulty, president of Action Coach Bluegrass in Southern Indiana. Today, I have Megan Gleason, founder and CEO of Sunline with me as my guest. We're going to be talking about her business, her journey to business ownership, and some of the challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. Now, if this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations like this. So, Megan, welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Mark. Tell us a little bit about Sunline and how you got started into this. Sure. Sunline, we're a wholesaler of a specific type of construction material, which is called EFAS. Some people know it as stucco. So when you see these commercial buildings, like fast food restaurants and malls, and they have what looks like a cement exterior to them, basically that's stucco. So it's a type of wall system. So yeah, I sell the materials that go into making up that wall system. As I said, I'm a wholesaler. I am online based. So I work from my office with a phone and a, and a laptop. And I don't handle any of the materials. Everything is shipped from our warehouses and factories. How I got started, uh, it was quite by chance, actually. I was going to start a very different business in nutritional consulting, because I'm a holistic nutritionist. But that was going to take you know, some time to get going. And I had a friend who was in my current line of business and said, yeah, you know what, I think that you'd be quite good at this. And this meets what you're really looking for in a business that only requires a phone and a laptop. You don't really need a physical location of yours to work out of. And so that appealed to me. And I said, sure, I'll give it a go. So we uh, entered into some kind of a partnership. I started my own separate business, but we partnered in the importing of the materials initially, and he helped me hugely in understanding the business and getting going, really, because I was clueless. <laughs> initially, I didn't know anything about EFIS materials. So, <laughs> yeah. What kind of team have you got? I don't have one, actually. It's just me. Okay. It's always been just me. I do all of the services here. I do the marketing, the sales, the logistics, uh, procurement. Yep, it's all just me. I have had two employees in the past that I took on a sales capacity. They didn't really work so well, so continued on by myself. And it keeps my overhead low. And it's a fairly streamlined, simple business that I really only need myself at the moment anyway. What was it that triggered you to decide you wanted to own your own business? Well, working for others has never appealed to me. That's <laughs> like the idea of. I've never had like a, tr a traditional sort of job, so to speak. I'm definitely someone who likes to be in control. <laughs> so I could do that much better running business for myself. And I see a lot of time wasting that goes on in sort of more corporate job settings that does not appeal to me, you know, meetings for the sake of meetings and getting ready to get ready a lot. So yeah, I prefer to work for myself and focus on what's really important, just get stuff done. Right. Tell us a little bit about your ideal customers. Who are your typical customers? Sure. So my customers are EFIS contractors. That would be the, the guys that are, you know, applying the EFIS materials and uh, construction companies. I do have a couple of stores that sell a material as well, but these days they are a smaller percentage of my customers as compared to the others. So how do your customers find you? Primarily on Google. Yeah, so it's our website that they find. We rank pretty well for related search terms. We do get some referrals, but I would say 95% of the customers come from Google searches. Okay. I, I'm assuming they can get these products from lots of different sources. So why you? Sure. Because I'm a wholesaler, they can save a significant amount of money. And because I don't have a physical store and then my overhead is lower. So I'm able to offer them like more competitive pricing than if they're going to a, a local like wall supply store or a, a Home Depot 
they do offer some of the same materials. Yeah, so that's one of my main advantages is the the cost savings for them. Is there anything other than price that leads them to choose you? I like to think that it's my customer service. The majority of my customers have been with me quite a long time. I'm very good friends with them. To me, developing relationships is the most important aspect of business. So I like to think that they do business with me because of me in large part. It's very important to me that they have a really good experience every time that they're purchasing. And because I'm so small, it's just me. I'm able to do that and give them the time and and make them feel like they are valued. Okay. Other than your website, is there any other marketing that you do? Yeah, primarily email marketing. We do send out some physical mailers, but I very little these days. I used to do that more in the beginning, the first couple of years. Don't get a great response from direct marketing, but I'd say generally our email marketing, and I do just a lot of cold calling. Okay. Yeah, getting on the phone, trying to have a conversation with people, reach out to them. Yeah, People seem to still appreciate if you actually want to get on the phone with them as opposed to sending endless emails or emailing somebody that you don't know that you never made that initial contact with. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you said that you've got a lot of long-term clients. Mm-hmm. Why is it they stay with you other than price? You know, what are, what are some of the things you do to really serve them well? Sure. Like I said, I'd like to think that we have really good relationships. And so I know everything about them. You know, I know about their family, you know, I know about their business. So that certainly helps. But I think that I'd like to make sure everything is very smooth in the, the sales process. So if say, for example, if there's some issue with the shipping, I'll be on it immediately and I will see it through till the issue is resolved. They don't get it. Oh, well, I'll get back to you and then email them about it in a week or something. Like, no, I want to resolve it for them like that day. And I want to follow up and make sure that they're happy. Everything went well. So I think that means a lot to them. There's more personalized touch there. Yeah, my main competitors are much larger companies, much, much larger. And there certainly isn't the personalization in those companies. Right. You can't easily call someone any time of the day also and reach them. Yeah, my customers could call me whenever they text me. I'm available to them pretty much always. Okay. So as you look back on your journey as an entrepreneur, business owner, I'm sure there have been some roadblocks or hurdles. So any memorable roadblocks or hurdles that you were challenged with that you had to figure out how to overcome? Sure. So after about two years, the uh, the friend that I had partnered with stole about $30,000 I had invested into the business and disappeared into thin air. So that was extremely challenging. I then was forced to learn other aspects of the business that he had sort of been handling at the time. So that was really daunting, but it was a, a blessing definitely that that happened because it pushed me to do that. And I grew then and, and consequently you know, didn't have to rely on him to perform his responsibilities. But yeah, it was a great growing opportunity for me. What are some other ways you've had to grow as your business has grown? What are some other ways you've had to personally grow as a business owner? The cold calling that I do, that was very challenging for me initially. And I still have to push myself to do it a lot. It's uncomfortable for most people to talk to someone on the phone they've never met before and try and you're selling a product, but you're selling yourself really. Hey, you know, I make them with you. <laughs> Would you like to give me your time and trust me to, you know, try my products and uh, trust that, that I will deliver? Yeah, I'd say that was one of the big ones for me. And when I started initially, there wasn't many women working in the construction industry at all. There is a little bit more now. There's still no women doing exactly what I do now. So that was challenging to try and be taken seriously as a female, especially the first couple of years. And I think that helped me grow maybe more personally than as a business owner, but putting myself out there and having faith that 
I had as much to offer as the other men in the industry. Okay. So are you a goal setter? You set goals for your business? Yeah, I do yearly goals and then I do uh, small goals each week, basically. Okay. Yeah, I don't overset. <laughs> I, I don't have like a uh, daily and then uh, a monthly so much. But yeah, I focus on what do I want to work on that week. And then I have uh, several larger goals for the year. Do you have any, you know, big three to five year goals or, you know, kind of Mm -hmm. that big, hairy, audacious goal? (laughs) Sure. Uh, I would say I have more uh, one to two year goal. That's kind of as long as they extend. But right now, um, working on getting into more government contracts, hopefully, in the process of becoming a certified as a woman owned business. So that opens you to be able to bid on, like I said, government contracts like um, and contracts at the like city and state level. That's something I've not done at all before. So yeah, very eager to get into that area. Okay. Any new markets other than government that you're looking for? I do currently have some international customers. I would like to expand a little bit more into the Caribbean, mostly in the Bahamas at the moment. And I would like it to move into other areas or other islands in the, in the Caribbean and a little more in the Bahamas. I am all over the U S right now. I think there are maybe only three States that I've never sold to. or don't have uh, customers in because they just don't really use this type of material, but yeah, we can ship anywhere in the U.S. and have besides those three states. Okay. What's something that you wish people knew about your business? That if you could get the message out that people don't know about you and your business that you wish they did. I would say that we are a woman-owned business. I think that does make a difference. And that we're a small business the other large competitors that we have, like I said, they have thousands of employees right. and their price structure is much, much higher than mine is. And what I can offer with our lower price structure is really advantageous to customers because it can increase their profit margins. And I don't think many people realize that we are out here as that option and you know, that there are alternatives to, well, an alternative (laughs) being me to the other large companies. So yeah, I wish more people knew that we existed and what we can offer in that way. Is there a job that's too big or too small for you? I would say probably not an individual job. If somebody had high volume requirements on a monthly basis, I might not initially be able to service them, but I could adjust to being able to. Okay. So you've got a lot of flexibility there. Yes, I do have flexibility, definitely. Okay. So what else about your journey would you want to share with other entrepreneurs, especially female entrepreneurs? What are some of the things you've had to overcome as a woman in construction industry? Mm, Sure. To go in with confidence and don't assume that you'll be treated differently and expect to be treated the same way as a man and don't be afraid of what you don't know don't let that be an obstacle to getting started uh, like I, said, I knew nothing about <laughs> ephus materials but i educated myself and if there's something that i didn't know and a customer wanted information on i would tell them i'll have to get right back to you on that <laughs> and uh, and I, I would do that but don't wait don't wait to feel like you're perfectly prepared to get started because you never will be Just get going. (laughs) Right. Awesome. Here's a couple of kind of short questions. What has been your biggest key to your success over the years? I think it is my attitude and personality, actually. That goes a really long way. Like I said, people sign up to do business with you as a person, as opposed to what product you're offering when they have to choose between you and a competitor. I think it is your personality, really. Right. What's your number one piece of advice to other, you know, women business owners, especially in construction? Well, know that the number of women in the industry is growing. We are getting there and it's more of a comfortable space to be in now. There's certainly not the discrimination and the 
I was a little bit of misogyny, <laughs> I think, initially when I started. Um, just general sexism, you know, silly attitudes towards gendered differences. So I wouldn't be as phased by that now for people getting into the the industry. Okay. What about a general piece of advice for any entrepreneur? What's one thing you would suggest? Sure. Same as I mentioned before, don't keep getting ready to get ready. Simply get started and you'll figure a lot out as you go along. And certainly ask for advice if you can have one person that you can use as a mentor that helps a lot. So my initial partner was that person that's highly valuable. And yeah, don't focus so much on the the minutia of needing the right business card or needing your website to look a certain way. Focus more on the income generating activities. At the end of the day, that's most important. Like, are you making sales? So spend the majority of your time on activities that will generate sales, not on scheduling your day out on a minute to minute basis, <laughs> just doing the action steps more. Right. Was there a book that you've read or recently or listened to that you would recommend to other business owners? Sure. I'm reading Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Cartwright at the moment. He is the CPA for Robert Kiyosaki. It's very helpful because if you are self-employed, you get taxed very rather severely. And <laughs> it's it's good to know how to set yourself up best to pay the least amount of taxes. Some of this I'm yeah, just learning more recently, actually, and how to structure you know your business for best tax advantages. So yeah, that's a really good one for that. All right. Are you a podcast junkie? Yes, I do listen to a lot more podcasts than I read at the moment, because that's easy to do as you're multitasking. <laughs> right. Yep. you have a favorite business related one? Well, it's more uh, real estate related because I invest in okay. real estate as well, but I listen to bigger pockets uh, specifically. So there, there is a sort of a business uh, angle to it, but yeah, I listen to it a lot. And I also listen to uh, Cody Sanchez. She's big on small, boring businesses uh, of which I have. No one could say that Ethos material is exciting or sexy right. in any way. It's definitely boring. But yeah, I like her material a lot. Okay, awesome. So if you had to choose one area of your business that you could improve immediately by just snapping your fingers, which area would you choose? If we could always be ranking on the first page of Google for all our relevant search terms, yeah, it's work to try and keep yourself there. But mm -hmm. as I said, that's how we get the majority of our new customers. Yeah, it would be great if every time someone search for an EFIS term, we were the first result. Expand that a little bit. So sure. you, use, you use Google, are you using pay-per-click or just SEO or a combination of both? Yeah, I don't use pay-per-click. I have in the past, it didn't work so well for me, but yeah, SEO, I have someone that works on our SEO all the time. And then I, I do different things like different blog posts and um, social media to try and keep us ranking well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, having somebody, a dedicated person for that, yeah, makes a huge difference. Okay. How closely do you pay attention to your analytics? Not as close as uh, he does, <laughs> the, the gentleman that runs that for okay. me, because he understands it better. Usually he will send me reports and I will look at it and try and follow along. <laughs> yeah. So you've got somebody who's looking after your analytics and making the tweaks and the necessary. Yes, I do. Excellent. So if people want to learn more about your company, other than obviously your website, where else could they go to learn more about you? Because your website is sunlinemesh.com, right? It is. Yep. Yep. The website in the process of improving our social media presence. So we are now on Instagram and on Facebook, but Honestly, if they're really interested, they can email me or call me and our contact is on the website. That is another goal that uh, our social media presence improves over the next year. I have found that aspect challenging, finding good content or material to put out about the materials that we sell. Okay. 
and your email is info at sunlinemesh.com. Is that it? It is. Place, yes. Right? It is. Yep. You'll reach me directly there. All right. Awesome. And yeah, your website's got a contact page. So easily somebody can do that. So for anybody looking to contact sunlinemesh.com, best way to get a hold of Megan. All right. So last question here to wrap us up today. What's most inspiring to you today, Megan? Well, it's not really business related, but I do run a separate business, a nonprofit. Uh, I run a dog rescue and uh, our dogs are the most inspiring to me, actually. Dogs don't have an ego like people do, and they live in the present moment. They don't hold on to the past or they're not thinking about the future. They're just in the present, uh, focused on that moment. Um, And they're extremely resilient creatures. So when I'm having a, a rough day or having some challenges, I look to them as examples, basically, for how to let go of stuff and just move forward. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. How'd you get into the dog rescue world? I've always loved animals. And I realized that pit bulls in particular have the hardest time of any breed and they're euthanized at the highest rate of any breed, about 2 million a year. So yeah, given that I love animals and dogs so much, yeah, I wanted to help. And then given again that I don't really like working for other people so much, I was volunteering, doing all the work of a rescue. And so I decided, well, it just makes sense if I start my own, get my 501c3 and take more control and try and make a bigger difference. That's great. So thank you so much, Megan. This has been Megan Gleason, founder, CEO of Sunline. And she's shared a lot of things about her approach to business, a little bit about her journey and some challenges she's overcome and just an all around great story. Make sure to bookmark this and make sure you learn all the lessons that she had to share with us today. And if this is your first time watching us, go ahead and subscribe so you get notifications on all of our interviews that we do so that you don't miss out on any of the learnings. And again, Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it also. Hope you have a great day. See you soon. Thanks. Bye.